Hey y'all, this is Tasha. I am back with another video. Thank you so much for stopping into my channel. If you are new here, welcome. I have rolled out the red carpet for you. But if you don't mind, just hitting that subscribe button, hitting the thumbs up button, comment in the comment section below. I'm only asking you to do three little things and all those three things are free 99, okay? If you are not new, welcome back. We are here for another review of the Never Ever Mets season one, episode five, y'all. This is... I had a busy weekend, so the review was late because of that. And then also, I had recorded this already. And for some reason, <laughs> my mic went out yet again. It was charged and ready, and it still went out. So I had a good three minutes of audio, and then the rest... <laughs> The rest was no sound. So I'm not using a mic today because it still is acting up even though I've charged it yet again. So I hope the audio is okay. Um, I'll increase it a little bit if it's not loud enough until I get a new mic just because I think it's a lot clearer that way. Anyway, nonetheless, I apologize for being tardy, but we are now here to talk about the Never Ever Met. So y'all, let's jump into the episode because I feel like although these episodes are short, baby, this one in particular, jam-packed with stuff, okay? So let's talk about it, girl. So the episode opens, everybody's eating cereal. I guess that's the only breakfast option they have in the house. <laughs> so they're eating breakfast, they're getting dressed for the day. Uh, fingernail polish Aaron is kind of letting the group know Domin is still a little bit upset with him, but he really just wants to see how it plays out. Um, we see Sienna and Brandon. They're talking after, you know, the other week she said she did. She wanted to, you know, still see what they could be. But Brandon was like, nah, I don't see nothing romantically for us. So <laughs> I'm out of here. All right. She says that a pl platonic relationship may be the extent of their relationship. And that is fine. But child, before they can even shower, get dressed, brush their teeth, like their breakfast digest, Taronda was coming in the place of like, uh... I talk to y'all for a minute all right thank you uh she says because you know we were hoping for a romantic connection and that didn't happen and that's basically the purpose of the show she lets them know this experience probably would not be beneficial for them so she lets them know go ahead and get ready pack your things cars will be here shortly because you gotta go you don't gotta go home but you gotta get the y'all y'all know the rest <laughs> So she tells them that they have to go home. Sienna says, you know, things were going good and then it just kind of went south. Sienna, the only good or decent thing y'all had was that very first cooking date. Other than that, you were a maniac. Uh, <laughs> picking and choosing which personality you was going to show up as that day. Like, let's not be real acting like, I don't know what happened. I Everything was going so great and I just don't know. You let the crazy loose too early. That's what happens, girl. We saw the real you. So they pack their things. They say their goodbyes. Cars were here, I feel like, in 30 minutes flat, okay? They had those plane tickets booked. The minute uh, Brandon said, yeah, we not going to be girlfriend, boyfriend ever, <laughs> they was on the line with Expedia, typing it in the computer, get these, pe get these people back home off of this show, okay? So now we are down to... Five couples, which honestly, we probably should have started there in the first place. So that's a more manageable show, in my opinion. Sienna says that she learned a lot about herself to be a better person. And I said, well, did you really? Because you told us that Brandon wasn't the first person to call you inconsistent. Like three other people already told you that. And that still wasn't enough for you to change. So you making me believe you being here in this house for what, a week made you change? Probably not, but okay. Brandon says he's still opening to meeting someone online. He will just probably meet them sooner in person. Sienna says the same thing. And I, I don't know why y'all had to learn that lesson through this show. But here we are with y'all gathering something from this experience that you did, okay? So Taronda gathers the rest of the group to let them know that Sienna and Brandon have gone home since their relationship wasn't going anywhere. And then she lets the rest of them know that they will be going on a field trip. And I said, thank goodness we are getting out of this house. Because I believe that's why a lot of drama is being stirred up is because they in the house, bored, bored in the house. Like, get us out of the house. Because the more we sit in here with, with each other, the more these people are going to start to get on my nerves. And I think that's where they are. But she tells them to eat lunch, get ready to leave in an hour. 
So the group is standing around looking a little awkward in the kitchen. Diamond is, you know, they're eating lunch. Diamond is grabbing her food. She's saying what happened the previous night is still bothering her. And she leaves to go eat alone because she doesn't want to be kind of in the same space with them. Because she don't want to be around fake people. So fingernail polish Aaron, her Aaron, comes in to check on her because he says he can feel that she is upset. And she tells him that she really felt alone. And he was like, I really still don't feel there was really anything for me to say. And I kind of de didn't even know what y'all was talking about. And I was diamond. I said, how you don't know what we was talking about? We talked about it earlier that day or the night before or whatever it was. Jody made it, Jody and Chris made it pretty clear what the situation was about. So how you didn't know what we was talking about, Aaron? You had, what, almost 24 hours and that's all you could come up with? Mm, okay. So she starts calling all the dudes fake in her confessional and saying, you know, even her man is, I don't know. But Aaron is like, hey, I'm not going for that. My girl calling me fake. I'm not here for that because I am not fake. So he goes marching back into the kitchen. He says... I'm going to make things clear right now. He points directly at Jody and says, I never liked you because you are full of crap. <laughs> when I tell y'all, I died because he came in there guns blazing at Jody and was like, whatever I got to do to prove my love tonight. <laughs> what movie is that from? I got to prove my love. I'm going to show my baby that I'm here for her. So he was like, I don't even like you. That basically his girl was right. That everybody in the house was talking about you, including him. He felt like he should have said something. So then Jody and Diamond get to going back and forth while everybody else in the house is kind of quiet. Jody tells Diamond that she's a liar and she's lying. And I'm like, well, Jody, well, what is she lying about exactly? Because... I feel like from what we've seen, Diamond has only shared what we have also witnessed, which is you and Chris being a little flirty with one another. What else has she said? That's a lie. So then Earring Aaron tries to jump in and Jody cuts him off. Fingernail polish Aaron is like, don't let her stop your speech. You need to speak up. So Earring Aaron is like, well, what brought this up? And he's like, my woman thought I was fake and I'm sticking beside my woman. I am here for her. And I should have been the first one to spoke up because I have her back. And if, when the camera pans over the diamond, y'all, she is just smiling. I say Aaron going to get some cookie tonight because diamond, she loves this. right. She was eating this up of, ooh. My man, my man, my man, my man, my man. Okay, she was here for it, all right? So then fingernail polish Aaron, you know, is telling earring Aaron, you know, I am 50 plus years old. I can really see right through her. I know she is not the one for you, and I really hope you find your person. And before we leave here, I want you to get my phone number because you're going to call me one day and say, man, you was right. Fingernail polish Aaron. Earring Aaron already know you right in this very moment. He just can't tell us on TV right now that, you know, he's just here for probably, you know, a little getaway vacation. But he really want one of the homeboys back at the crib. He can't tell us that right now. So, yes, you are indeed right, Aaron. Okay. So, Diamond goes up this upstairs. She brings Shay up to speed on what happened because Shay wasn't in the kitchen. And when I tell y'all... Shay and Josh got the strongest side eye for me in the very beginning because 12 years and y'all have not met in person. And he has a three-year-old. I'm not here for it, okay? However, they stay out the way and mind their business. The whole time the commotion was going on in the kitchen, Shay wasn't even in the kitchen. And Josh was in the kitchen eating, okay? Stay it out the way, minding their own business, okay? Chris then, as he's in the kitchen with the rest of the couples, Chris stands up and says... I just want to let it be known because they saying everybody was talking about you. I did not have anything bad to say about you. And I have not said anything. Of course you haven't, Chris. That's the whole point. You like her. So, of course, you're not going to say anything bad about her. Make it, This grandstanding that you're doing, it, it was unnecessary. And it didn't make you look any better, okay? So he starts pointing around the room, asking, you know, if anybody, have you heard me talk about her? Have you heard me talk about her? He gets to Millie and Millie is like, I don't give a F. I could care less. And I really don't want to hear ish that people got to say that don't stand on their word. 
she says in her confessional that it just doesn't look right that he treats Jody better, better than he treats the woman that he came here for. Facts. Chris then says his favorite person in the house is Jody. Millie is like, ding bat. That is the whole point. She should not be your favorite person in the house. Sandia should be your favorite person in the house because that's who you came here for. Do you hear yourself, Chris? Do your ears work? Do the thing in between your ears work? I, we just got questions, okay? Chris does typical F-boy-ish. He's, I don't argue with women. Greg, you need to get your girl. Greg is like, nope, I'm going to stand up because my girl can say what she got to say. And if anything popped off, I'm already standing up, ready to go. All right? He ain't taking his ish, and I appreciate it. Um, Aaron then goes to check on Diamond. She's getting ready. She kisses him, and she's like, that's all I wanted. That is all I wanted. And Aaron says, we'll definitely be using the Boom Boom Room tonight. Indeed, y'all will be. We then see Chris and Sandia. Um, they are talking away from the group. He's blaming their issues basically on everyone else. He's saying it's becoming a whole everyday deal. Nobody has anything of substance to say except for about him and Jody. Sandia acts confused of, I don't even know what was happening. I was just sitting there and I just didn't even know what was happening. Sandia gets on my nerves, y'all. <laughs> Uh, Chris and Sandia both say they are pretty much non-confrontational. Chris, bye. Sure you aren't, okay? You are confrontational because you've shown us that. But Sandia, I truly believe that because she just does anything just to, to get along and to go along with whatever is happening. Um, he says, basically, you stick with me, I stick with you. And we're going to be good if we got each other's back. And you don't let these other people get in your head. Yeah, because you don't want anybody else potentially talking any type of common sense into Sandia. You want to be able to manipulate and control her just as you have been doing. And you can't do that properly if any of the other women are talking to her. Got it, Chris. So the couples all get ready to leave the house. And everyone is really excited to get away. They head into a building. We see there's candles lit. There's feathers. There's rope. And I think it was Chris that says, ooh, I love to dance. And Tyrande's like, no, no, not so fast. We're not here to dance, okay? But they are now shifting the experience into the hangover phase where they will test their compatibility and gauge their relationship to see if it's true. So today they're going to be exploring rope bondage. I can't remember the name that they called it, but it's rope bondage. And this is supposed to help with trust and healthy communication. Jody says, ooh, this is right up my alley because I'm a sexologist. Y'all, I keep forgetting she's a sexologist because she is so boring. And how can you not see as a sexologist that this man is not attracted to you, nor are you attracted to this man? Hmm? Hmm? All right. So we see that the sex educator for today is Orpheus Black. Um, he says that rope bondage will help them with surrendering and exploring the safety of their partner. Jody lets us know in the confessional that she was sexually abused at a young age, but she was able to kind of heal, grow from it, take control of it, and become the sexologist that she is today. Mr. Orpheus tells them to make their choices on who will be tied, who will be doing the tying. So Jody says, I'm going to tie the rope on Aaron because of her trauma. Greg is being tied by Millie. Shay is being tied by Josh. Sandia is being tied by Chris, and Aaron is being tied by Diamond. Tyrande is being tied real sensually by Mr. Orpheus, okay? He's showing them the example as they are doing it. So he's, you know, tying her up, getting it over her shoulders and her arms around her back. And she's like, you're not going to be playing with me too much longer, sir, okay? But he says that they should be tying the rope no tighter than they would hug somebody. So we're not trying to hurt nobody trying to hug on them okay so then the person that is tied up we then have a feather that we're kind of brushing across their face and their arms or whatever child if y'all look at earring Aaron during this scene he looks so uncomfortable so disinterested it's like when is this going to be over so I can call my man is the vibes I was getting go back and watch if you didn't notice it okay after they are done they untie the person they are told they need to untie slowly so if it has taken five minutes for them to tie, they need to take 10 minutes to untie. 
Sandia says that her and Chris are really connected physically, but there's just a lot of drama around their relationship. And if they want to, if he wants to move forward, he really has to consider her feelings. Has he not shown you enough that he's not going to consider your feelings, Sandia? Like, believe people the first time they show you, okay? But this was a great opportunity for them to allow trust and to allow someone else to take care of them. Earring Aaron says that he would like more of a physical connection with Jody, but the one roadblock is sexual attraction. Y'all, he said, I think Jody likes my mind, but I don't think I make her girly parts tingle. You don't. And any man that calls my parts girly parts, you're not going to make anything tingle, okay? Mm, no, thank you. Um, <laughs> I don't know how y'all continue to really not share space with one another, not really do things with one another, but yet you want some type of sexual attraction? How that work? How, how does one be sexually attracted to someone that they don't spend time with? Okay. The couples all arrive back to the house. They're getting ready to eat dinner. Diamond says the drama with Jody is behind her and she's really going to focus on her boo going forward. Taronda comes in. She's talking to Sandia and Chris and tells them based on their conversations about them, you know, wanting to speak to the therapist that she's granted them their wishes and the therapist is here and she's willing to talk to them. Chris says he's apprehensive about going into it and unsure if it will help. Yeah, it won't help your agenda of wanting to manipulate and brainwash her. No, it won't help that agenda. But as far as helping a relationship, if that's what you want, of course, a therapist will help that, Chris. So shut up. They meet with Dr. Romney and she asks about their relationship. So they kind of give her the backstory. Sandia tells her that more so it's the communication issue with me. With them, she gives the therapist an example of, you know, him basically being too friendly with someone in the house. Chris says that she is really too emotional and he said that in his mind because he's not being malicious he's just being friendly he don't mean nothing by it that Sandia is attacking him and it makes it feel like she wants to control him. First off it's because you want to control her and you cannot even stomach ain't no way she gonna have no control over me okay. Second of all, anytime anybody talks, starts talking to you and their eyes get big and their eyebrows are raised the whole time and they start leaning in, they lying. They lying. And they hoping that all of that helps you to ignore the fact that the words that are coming out their mouth are lies. Okay? And that's what he kept doing the whole time. And if y'all notice, the therapist, she even started doing it back to him. But Chris is probably not even smart enough. He probably didn't even pick that up of, I'm going to show you a reflection of what you're giving me and see how stupid you look. But that probably went way over his head. But while they are in with the therapist, the rest of the house play a game where Jody is asking the group questions and they write down answers on a piece of paper and then they have to guess who said each answer. So the first question is, what is something you are curious about sexually that you haven't explored? The first response is orgy. They guessed that it was earring Aaron, but it was actually Jody. Aaron says with Jody being a sexologist, he thinks he puts too much pressure on himself to create intimacy with her. But at the same time, he's trying to respect her boundaries. That sentence don't even make sense to me. Because why... Do you feel like because she's a sexologist, you have to, you know, be at a certain place because she's well versed, but yet you want to respect her boundaries, which always means taking kind of a backseat and taking her lead. The two don't match up, Aaron, but okay. I, I just want to see the footage that we obviously are missing because when have you cr tried to create uh, any type of intimate connection with her? Okay. Anyway, the next card that Jody reads says threesome. They say the group says it's Shay or Josh, and it isn't indeed Josh. So back with Chris and Sadia, he says that when she expresses herself, it's in a highly it's in a highly emotional way. So it makes him feel attacked. 
Yes, Chris. Let's let's play the victim card. All else has failed and they are not believing your lies. So let's check that off the list. And the next thing on the list is to play victim. So let's do it. Sandia says she wears, wears her emotions on her face and the therapist tell her that's not necessarily a bad thing. She tells him that um, she tells Chris that he needs to empathize more with her discomfort and he really needs to make a safe place for her. Chris says that the biggest challenge or problem um, with him is that he needs to listen to her more and communicate. Sandia says that Chris avoids emotional stuff because his past relationships and he really can't put that on a new relationship. So the therapist tells her that, you know, trust takes a little bit longer when you've been hurt in a previous relationship. And she tells Sandia to be patient with him. You got to be patient as he tries to build trust with you. But what effort is he really putting in to build trust? Like I'm all for being patient with somebody as they're kind of going through some things. But this is not a new revelation for Chris. He knows he has trust issues. So what are you outside of a relationship and dating? What are you doing for that so that you're healthy when you do find the person you want to be in a relationship with? Huh? Hmm. All right. Chris lets us know that he got a lot out of the session. Sure you did. You knew all this stuff. You just don't want to do nothing about it. But he tells her that we have pros and cons, but our pros outweigh the cons. So let's high five and let's kiss and we're going to be good to go. It is now the next day and Jody and Sandia, they talk and I'm like, here we go again. Can we please stop going merry-go-round around this situation? Jody says that people think you have to really be all over your partner to form a connection. And it's really healthy to spend time apart. We don't have to be around each other all the time. You don't, girl. But when we only see y'all together in group settings, I feel like, have we ever seen, outside of the very first initial date, have we seen Jody and Aaron doing anything else with just the two of them? I'll wait. Nothing? Got it. All right. But... She says that if they are around each other all the time, well, for her, if she's around her partner all the time and if she's intimate and then after that, she gets bored. So she says a lot of people call her a man eater. Again, as I said in the previous video, I think she's just male identified. She's not a male eater. Like, okay. But she's saying the quicker something gets the physical, the quicker she will get bored. And again, have you explored that with a therapist? Y'all, it is 2024. We have access to therapists in a number of ways. Um, and insurance covers it really well these days. You give it a shot. See what happens. So we then see that Diamond's sister will be coming in. Aaron's friend of 37 years named Ronald will be coming in. Ronald first comes in. He's starting to play pool um, with Aaron. And he says, Aaron tells him that they've been getting to know each other. And he's really in the mind frame of making her his wife. And before this is over with, he wants to propose. And Ronald is like, wow. So you ain't told your friend since the eighth grade that you was feeling this woman enough that you ready to make her your wife? Why is he so shocked? Or is he putting on for the cameras? Ronald says that there is a such thing as long engagements. And Aaron is like, right, but you got to propose first. Yeah, you do, but you also can just wait to propose. And then once you propose, get married in, say, 12, 18 months after you plan a wedding. You can also do that, Aaron. Mm hmm. You know, it's that. Mm hmm. So Ronald asks, what, what about her makes him ready to get married? And he said, man, you know, I be dating like I'm shopping for clothes. And I said, say what now? You comparing choosing a wife to picking up a carrot khakis down at the Nordstrom's right is that we 50 plus years old and that's what we comparing selecting a life partner with is selecting a polo shirt that you can pick up try on don't like it pick it up don't like it put it back we can pick it up buy it take it home let it sit for a few days and take it back and that's what we comparing choosing a wife with But he says Diamond is a one and spending time with her has just helped. He tells Ronald that her sister is coming. He's not looking forward to it because the two of them have gotten into it over social media. He said he posted something on Facebook. The sister commented and told Diamond that she didn't like him. 
And Diamond is telling, um, I believe it was Shay, she's like, she just going to have to get over because that's going to be her brother-in-law one day. All right, girl. Okay. So then here comes Sister Irene Child with this outfit and this hair that is happening. All right. I said we about to be in for a good time. All right. Aaron tells Ronald that Diamond forgave him about the whole situation with the other woman. Diamond is then talking to Irene and is all giggly about, you know, their first date and talking about how he cried. Irene rolled her eyes and she was not moved because she says he went and got another woman thinking the grass was going to be greener when it wasn't. He came back to my sister. Girl, I understand how you feel because I'm definitely that type of sister as well. You do my sister wrong, it ain't no coming back from it, okay? The minute she tells me, the minute I find out, ain't no coming back from it. But at this point, girl, your sister has gotten over it. So either you be loud and with all that rah-rah over there, or you come over here and support me and be quiet. Pick one, because your sister liked this man. It is what it is, all right? So she explains the situation as like, you know, because I was here, he was there, he wasn't, he didn't know what I was doing, I didn't know what he was doing, the other girl was closer, so he asked her to marry him. Obviously, the other girl said no, or I don't know, or whatever it was, and because of her answer, Aaron said she wasn't the one. So you didn't know if she was the one, it was her response that solidified you knowing that's not your wife. Aaron, like you cool and all, but you not you not looking good <laughs> every time. It just goes on and on. You don't be looking good. But after Diamond says all that to Irene, child, when I tell you I hollered when Irene said that's a bunch of malarkey. I feel like I haven't heard the word malarkey since a nineties sitcom. Okay, but I said a bunch. Of, Irene, where did you get that word from? <laughs> So she tells her that, you know, Aaron, excuse me. She says that Aaron ain't the one she's like, and Diamond is like, I'm so happy. The sister ain't trying to hear it. She's asking what Aaron brings to the table other than peen. Um, as she's continuing to go off, she's getting louder and louder. Aaron and Ronald are starting to walk up to the room. They can start to hear her talking. And at this point, I feel like there was a switch in Irene that says, my time has arrived. <laughs> it is now for me, time for me to become a reality TV star. So let's ante up and give this one more good go <laughs> and make this a real good TV moment, okay? So Aaron and Ronald walk into the room. Irene is still going on expressing how much she dislikes him. And she's like, you can be happy all you want, Diamond. That don't mean I have to accept him, okay? So Ronald is introduced to Diamond and Ronald is like, oh my God, she's so beautiful. Diamond introduces Irene to um, Aaron and they immediately start going in on the social media issue because Irene, during the introduction, she don't really look his way. She don't look happy. It's kind of one of them side eyes uh, like, okay, I see you, but that's all the acknowledgement you're going to get from me. So he, Aaron yells out, Basically, it's like, what's the problem? What's the problem? She was like, you know. Aaron says, yeah, you dipped in where you shouldn't have been dipping. You need to get the F out. And then Aaron calls her an ugly ass. Irene calls him an ugly ass frog. I said, if this ain't old people trying to go tit for tat and read each other, I don't know what is. But at this point, it's just, it's comical, okay? So the rest of the house is starting to hear what's happening as well. And when I saw... Earring Aaron poke his head around that corner to listen and everybody else was listening in. That was the highlight of the show for me because that would have been me. Like, let me listen. I ain't going to get too close because I don't want to be in the drama. But I want to be here to hear what the heck is going on, okay? <laughs> Sandia says, oh, I would never allow for Chris to speak to one of my sisters the way Aaron is speaking to Diamond's sister. Sandia, baby girl. Baby girl, sit this one out. This one ain't for you because Chris has disrespected you in front of your face. He don't have to go to a family member to do that. He did that to you in front of your face. So you saying that wouldn't fly? Yes, it would because you let it fly to yourself. All right. So Irene then tells Aaron, child. He tell, she tells him to scratch her ass with diarrhea. Aaron says, your face looks like an ass. She says, your entire body looks like an ass. 
And then I don't know how they cut and slice this whole argument, but Irene, in my opinion, goes too far. And all we hear is your mama, your pappy, and your raggedy ass children too. Girl, say what? You just talked about this man's whole family. This is not Kendrick Lamar and Drake. And you don't talk about this man's whole family. So they are trying to get at each other at this point. Diamond is holding her sister back. Ronald and the crew is holding Aaron back. And y'all, I blame Diamond. Because Diamond knew him and her sister. Is him? They just don't, they don't get along. So you can pick no other family member to bring here to meet this man. We already know how your sister feel about him. She was not needed. So I blame Diamond at the end. But the two of them just, it was nasty. I did not like the way Aaron was talking to her. I did not like the way she was talking to him. Like it was just nasty all around in my opinion. But Irene, if Diamond is making a mistake, honey, she has to make that mistake for herself. We, You can't protect her from it. Let her go through it. Let her grow through it. And just be there to support her should the chips fall where they may. But Diamond, you also going to have to make a choice, honey. Because if you continue to be with this man, you're going to have to make a choice between, you know, him or your sister. Every time there's any family events or things happening, these two can't be in the same space. Because I honestly, I don't see how you come back for this. I don't see how we can come back and be at the Thanksgiving table eating together after you saying, my mom and my daddy, my raggedy ass kids, like... <laughs> But that was the end of the episode, y'all. Let me know what y'all thoughts were. Please leave your comment sections in the comment section below so we can chat it up, y'all. But we will be back here for episode six of the Never Ever Mess. Until then, peace.